everybody and welcome back to Astrology Victoria today with your host Tatiana here to talk about the astrology of the week of July 4th to July 10th. This week is again a continuation of the energy of last week but we will start feeling a shift in energy. Let's get into the specifics of this week. So we begin the week. Um, we begin the week from a lot of heat, let's say. Whatever has happened in your world or in the world stage, there seems to be a lot of heat and a lot of directness, a lot of, you know, Mars is in the last degree of Aries and Mercury is in the last degree of Gemini and they are ma making a little sex style here. And this is just that last opportunity, let's say, to get very clear and concise, you know, about the things that you're doing and where you're going. And this initiation energy of the past month, where there is a lot of energy to get going into a new direction might be like having its, its last boost of the fuel, you know, and your thoughts, Mercury, aligning with that energy of directness, clarity, and action. So this is a time to talk, talk what we're, you know, do what you need to do, share what you need to share, think about what you need to think, and go, be direct. This is that very direct energy is the energy of asking for what you need and speaking your mind. That is a lot the Aries. Also can be speaking what you want and going for what you want, Aries. This is, mm, yeah, it, it could be very supportive to be assertive and to be clear in your communication. And this is what Mercury and Mars can bring on a little bit of a not so good side you know maybe being too bold or too quick uh might not be the best way to use this energy but because it's, it's a sex style i think this is a good time it's a good energy that you can use to communicate clearly so if you have anything to say be clear concise and to the point that's that for that energy. Why? Because these two planets are going to shift signs and the energy of outward energy is going to start getting mm. inward. And this is due to several things. So the first thing is because of the entry on July 5th of uh, Mars in Taurus and Mercury in Cancer. So we're going to see, again, a shift from that very young energy that we had. Push, push, push in, in like uh, the month of June into a, okay, now we need to go back inside towards a yin energy, either to seek more pleasure, Taurus, to get clear about our resources or our money, Taurus, or to go for what we need, Taurus, you know, uh, what we need to survive. There's going to be a lot of that in the mix. And uh, then the Cancer energy, so the sun still in Cancer and Mercury entering Cancer, the mind, our thoughts, and our emotions must might start mixing the emotions and the thoughts and the sensitivity might open up also because Neptune here is retrograding so as Neptune retrogrades it also opens us up to to being more in tune with the internal world and our connection to everything that is so we can see more clearly you know what it is that we truly value and want to embody Again, whenever we have planets in Taurus, there is a, a big emphasis in resources, tangible things, and what we actually need to survive, basically food, 
or money or whatever time or whatever our resources. So there's going to be a big emphasis this month in resources. And later on, as Uranus approaches the North Node, we're going to see big, massive awakenings, shakeups in the Taurus areas of our lives. Um, so let's go back a little bit to see the image of Taurus. You know, Taurus is, it's the stability. It's the sense that we have all that we need. In its most splendorous energy is a Venus ruled sign. And here, it's like there's food, there's money, there's abundance, there's safety, there's stability. It's slow. Everything's there, right? That is the pure Taurus energy. And then we have the Cancer energy. Cancer energy, again, a yin sign where we feel that we need, is where we feel protected, nurtured, cared for. That's the essence of the Cancer energy. And where home, family, and lineage are very present. So let's go back to our beginning of, of, of the week when July 2nd, uh, July uh, 5th, Mercury enters Cancer and Mars enters Taurus. This Taurus energy and this Cancer energy begins to be a little bit more prominent. So either we're, we're wanting to go back home and to what is essential. With Mercury and Cancer, there might be a lot of reminiscence of the past, of the family, of um, maybe talking about the family, um, or also making sure that we have what we need to survive, to feel safe, to feel at home. So where is our home? What is your home? There might be a lot of talk about lineage. And I'm gonna tell you a little story. I'm going to do an audition for a, um, an artist uh, call to create a piece about identity. And part of, of, of doing this audition, which is tomorrow, is researching uh, about my family and your lineage. So I called my cousin today and then we started talking about, about precisely the family, where I come from, my grandfather, the histories. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much in line with Mercury and Cancer, like talking about family or talking to family. I had not spoken to my cousin in a long time, you know? And I was asking my dad about certain songs that were composed for him. And, you know, and I'm finding myself already in this energy, you know? And this is personal to me, but this is exactly how that energy feels. So maybe for you, I don't know how it will feel for you, but there will be either an emotional connection to family or a need for safety or talking about uh, what, what makes you feel safe. Also your thoughts, what you think you need to feel safe because the Cancer Capricorn axis is the axis of safety, either emotional safety and inward safety or an outward safety. You know, it's a cardinal sign. So this energy tends to also move forward. And so it's not like the fixed signs like Taurus, which possibly all the changes that will be occurring in the Taurus areas of your life are gonna be a little bit more long lasting and more um, let's say, yeah, more set. This energy can be many things. The Taurus Cancer dialogue. In a certain sense, it could be fighting for resources in its lowest energy. And I don't know if you remember, I mean, I'm sure you do, the toilet paper incidents back at the beginning of the pandemic, people just fighting in the stores to hoard the toilet paper. So there could be on its lowest energy or expression, something of that energy of fighting for resources. Um, another way to see it is like getting acting, get off your butt and see how you can get your own resources, you know, 
get to work, you know, get to it. <laughs> Another expression of this energy is seeking pleasure as well, because stores wants pleasure and stability. Uh, however, because the climate of this uh, Taurus energy is squaring, squaring Saturn here, Uranus and Taurus and the nodes, it's starting to square. This energy is amping up. It's not yet quite there. It's not yet quite exact. But we will start seeing that there are, again, with Saturn, there, there is difficulty. There might be oppression, difficulty, problem with problems with our resources, precisely. Um, the need to control the resources. There could be uh, scarcity or limitations. I know when there's like rationing, it feels like rationing. This is an energy that feels like contracting, you know, all the Taurus themes. While Uranus is wanting to liberate us from the old ways of getting our resources. Whatever that means for us as a planet, if we have misused and abused, you know, the resources of our planet, well, Uranus will make sure that, well, that will change. Yes or yes, it will change. And it will propel us into a new way of getting resources. That's why we could expect extreme instability in the financial markets extreme instability in how we ourselves get our little food to eat, you know? And as Mars starts transiting Taurus, this could bring a lot of a revolutionary energy and a revolutionary energy is not necessarily something, I mean, it's not bad. It could be bad if it's violent and Mars could bring violence, especially because Mars and Pluto are still in a square. So this is why the climate is not just a peaceful seeking pleasure climate. Yes, Taurus, but look at the actors here, Mars and Pluto, there is a lot of the shadow, the anger, ugh, the rage. I, I feel even like we might need to defend our things. You know, there's almost a sense of like, there's something unsafe in the air and I need to protect myself. And again, those are just collective energies playing out. The way we can best use these energies in order not to go into the shadow side is to take the passion of Mars, like get off your butt and get real about things and, and do something about it and do the best you can. You know, again, I keep saying, create alliances with people, you know, Find ways to, to, to find community, people around you, people to have exchanges with, dialogue, exchange, and to feel that you can create a sense of safety within a, a more close community. It could be in your neighborhood. It could be in your building. You know, this is the time to do that. Otherwise, what happens is that it can be the opposite. It can create enormous anger, disruption, and again, toilet paper syndrome, you know, people trying to protect their own and mama bear kind of energy. <sighs> and I think, I mean, I don't know, this is, this is me just reading into the energy of these archetypes and giving you the choice <laughs> because we all have a choice of how we want to live this. Put this Mars to work. Put it, put it to work in a garden. You know, I keep saying this over and over again. And again, it, this is also my personal experience because now I live in a farm and trust me, farm work is not easy. It's labor. You have to get to it and dig holes and put plants and weed things. And it's not that, you know, it requires, you know, action. It requires movement. It requires to put your actual hands in the dirt. And because the Taurus energy is a very grounded energy, this is exactly it. So if, if I tell you how to turn this energy into something extremely positive, find yourself a, you know, a local garden that you can 
um, maybe plant your little plants or do something and share with your neighbors or something like that. I keep saying this over and over again because this is a way forward. Otherwise, I don't know, the energy will find expressions. And um, I don't know, you will tell me in the comments below how this energy is finding expression in your life. And again, it also depends on what area of your life you have the Taurus energy. And because this conjunction is very close, it's starting to happen whenever anything touches the nodal axis, there is like a push, an evolutionary push. And it's like an amplification of this planet, of the planet that touches the node. So Uranus is really revolutionizing and freeing ourselves, getting ourselves more sovereign and disrupting. And sometimes that disruption means it takes something away. Sometimes that's how it happens but it's all for, a, for the best. I think I said this like in the previous video, in the previous video, in the previous video, but if you have not watched it, again, our little reminder of this energy is just moving us forward into a new paradigm, a new paradigm. And now we have no escape with these aspects here and Pluto uh, being in the last degrees of Capricorn, and Pluto has been showing all the ugly side of these pyramidal structures and how we cannot keep, we can't keep functioning like this. Once again, and once again, Pluto will take that down and we need to start functioning like this. So again, for the nth time, I'll repeat it. So that's that in the energy for this week. And um, we have towards the end of the week. No, this is the beginning of the week. Blah, 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 blah. What am I doing? Uh, so yeah, so here, this is when, um, yes, the energy starts getting a little bit more intense. And also the square starts getting a little bit more and more and closer and closer we will get more of that in august um venus will be also uh trining saturn starting to train saturn by the end of the week and this is a very positive aspect in the sense that the people that we are surrounded by uh we could be creating long-lasting partnerships because Saturn brings stability and durability to anything. And with Venus, it's, it can bring uh, stability and a sense of commitment to maybe new opportunities, new endeavors. Again, Venus is in Gemini exploring all kinds of new things. Or Venus in Gemini also wants to speak. So we might be able to uh, create, be creative and, and create things that that can also last in the long term again venus has to do with values and money so maybe we're thinking about uh being a little bit more conservative that's the word conservative with our money and what we value so this is a supportive aspect to this to mars because if we know and we have clarity in what our needs are and we can minimize it to certain specific things, then Venus and a trining um, Saturn can solidify that into very conservative ways of, um, of, of getting what we value and making sure we are um, being, not splurging, but being realistic about what we have and, and, and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be a good thing to get organized and um, to, to know where your money is, where, where you're at. And that is important to do right now. Like get organized with, with, with your things. And it's a very supportive aspect. Likewise, Venus is not just what we value our money. Venus is also our relationship. So it can be a good time to get organized and settled with, you know, either a romantic partner 
or it's a good time to maybe tie the knot, you know, with a trying to Saturn, this brings long-term commitments also with people around you and friends, you know, in, in Gemini, there is this novelty. So you might have a lot of novelty in, in your life and new relationships that could be being, that are being formed that uh, are good, good relationships to have for cooperation and, and uh, solidifying relationships that may la last long in the long in the long term. So these are good things to, to, well, to take into consideration this week. It's a good time for that. And we will be having also uh, the square forming of Venus to Neptune. And this one, this is when things might tend to get either a little bit fuzzy regarding relationships. However, because we have Saturn giving us a real, a little reality check, it might not be that bad. Because when Venus squares Neptune, there could be like the rose colored glasses effect where we see things not exactly as they are, or we have a lot of wishful thinking and then a relationship may seem amazing. And it's like this fantasy. And then it's like not really exactly that. So we need to be a, bit, a little bit more grounded and be more discerning. With Saturn Venus, that's the good news. It, you might have that, that like soul connection because sometimes Venus and Neptune bring those soul connections. You know, Neptune is, is what's, what's beyond, beyond the veil. You know, so you might be even meeting up with that other side of the veil and Saturn brings a little bit of the reality to it. So it's good. It's, it's, it's a good thing for it. I, I would say this is a good, this, this little aspect to Saturn and to Neptune bring that capacity to have soulful connections and yet be more grounded and more clear about them. It's also a great aspect to create some art. You know, if you're, it, it's a beautiful time to create art to create some, to express yourself in a beautiful way, maybe poetry, because Venus in Gemini also has this capacity to communicate beautifully. So it's a time to maybe bring from the other side some poetic you know, inspiration and just write it down. And that's a way to channel this energy in a positive way. Otherwise, you know, we could get a little bit distracted and, and, and um, not see things for what they really are, especially people. Uh, so it is a very important time for you to get clear about the people around you and in your life and uh, take things slowly, I would say. This is a good reminder and Saturn Venus will help us do that. Um, yeah, so let me, let me know what's going on in your life. Uh, leave me comments and see what's going on in your life. Are you maybe having new relationships? How is that presenting for yourself? Or are you having new creative works? In my case, that's exactly what it is. You know, my, um, uh, and I'm having new friendships forming that seem to be really getting more solid so in my own personal life this is actually playing out pretty much accurately but i want you to tell me how these energies are playing out for you and also in last week's video where this tension is mounting and things might get a little bit in a crisis how are you dealing with that and also i would love to know like what do you value and what you want to be you know striving for i like that word striving you know instead of fighting striving or thriving for <laughs> let's say because this is the energy we want to cultivate at least this is the energy i want to cultivate in my life is the energy of yes let's get to it and let's make it grow and this energy will help us if we go or we put our mind to that um and get together with people and and find your own sense of safety within yourself. If we find ourselves a sense of safety and home within ourselves, guess what? Everything else follows. And you can open yourself to the yin 
energies of Cancer and the yin energies of Taurus, which are receptive energies. So allow yourselves to be receptive also of, of the abundance that Mother Nature has to offer, you know. So this is this, this is me, this is what's going on this week. And I will see you next week for a little bit more astrology and uh, see how this starts getting like amping up in the world stage. And I hope this is just all for the better, which I do believe that everything that happens in our world is product of our thoughts and our actions. And if we align with the highest forms of our thoughts and our actions and, and the archetypes of the planets, then we can create truly magnificent things. And the awakening that comes with Uranus can be a true revelation of a new world that is forming, that is essentially going to be more abundant for everybody in the long run, even though it might seem at this moment that it's not. Let's keep our thoughts in that light and let's keep up our thoughts growing with all the abundance that is there for everybody on the planet and all those who are also suffering. And yes, this is just my message and my invitation to you all. So may you have a blessed day and let's get to it. Blessings. See you next time. Bye.